I think when I started these tests, I doubt you're going to find very many people who would consider me a Fluke fanboy. My first digital meter I had ever purchased was a Fluke. And I learned to really hate that meter. It was not robust at all. I damaged it quite a few times. It cost me a lot of money to repair it. I finally just gave up on it. When I ran that first set of 12 meters, believe me, the last meter I wanted to see survive those tests was that Fluke 101. I was actually rooting for that meter to fail right off the bat. But what I've seen over these years is that Fluke continues to dominate all the tests that I put them through. It doesn't really matter if it's the transient testing or now these life cycle tests that I'm putting the switches through. I mean, I really just have to be honest and say that, you know, their engineers have really done a good job. To date, I've tested over 57 meters. This doesn't include the ones I've repaired, modified, or retested. It also doesn't include the data for the pre-production 121 GW. David asked that I not include that in the spreadsheet. But of course, if you watch the video, you know that that meter failed at 2 kV with a 100 microsecond full width half height and the 2 ohm source. So about 500 volts higher than what the previous 87V had failed at. I'm getting ready to run our 87V through our final transient test. And I was going back through some of the posts that I had seen about the 87V and the testing that I had performed previously. This is one that David posted from the EV blog. He says, I think it's important to also understand Joe's tests in context. The Fluke 87V, the most trusted meter on the market, fails every single one of Joe's tests. According to Joe's test, it's one of the worst meters on the market. Yet I doubt there is a single 87V owner ever who has seen their meter die due to any ESD or pulse overload, etc. A person by the name of Game Programmer 79 responds, I agree. Most of the tests are worst case scenarios, black swan events. 87V is a standard when it comes to rugged meters, but has failed many of Joe's tests. In fact, Fluke 101 has passed more tests than any of the more expensive meters. EEV blog responds, for me it's simply a matter of has the meter passed the independent safety testing, UL, ETL, etc. If so, then it's good enough to recommend and use it on anything it's rated for. Sure, if a meter is failing ESD testing or something that could potentially be a commonplace, then that may be a cause for concern. But even the Fluke 87V has shown no signs of doing that in practice for the 13 years it's been released as a V-series, apart from Joe's tests. Let's just say for argument's sake that this newest revision of the Fluke 87V does better on these tests. Even better, let's just say I can't even damage it. So the worst Fluke that I had tested is the 17B+. That meter was way up there with some of the best of them. And that was the worst one that Fluke has. When I've looked at the data I've collected so far, there aren't any real surprises except that 87V. Of the 57 meters I looked at, 9 meters had failed either the ESD testing or the AC line test. Those are some pretty basic tests and really, in my opinion, there's no excuse to have a meter fail those. When I designed the new programmable generator that I'm using today, I set the upper limit to just under 6 kV. To be clear, this wasn't some number I pulled out of my ass, it was based on the very first set of data I collected from the original 12 meters. The only meter that would survive on that new transient generator from that first set of meters I looked at was the Fluke 101. After I ran that Fluke 101, there was another forum member who had been following all my testing, and they had access to a true combo generator that you would use for the IEC testing. Their generator would go up to 12 kV. <laughs> so they actually repeated my testing, of course using a 12 kV, 2 ohm source, 50 microsecond full width half height, and the meter survived. So from then on, that Fluke 101 became my gold standard, not the 87V. And it wasn't driven by marketing hype, but because it outperformed every other meter that I had looked at. It was truly in a class all by itself when it came to how robust that meter was. If we go back and we look at how many meters were damaged at 5.8 kV or less, 11 of the original 12 meters failed. 20 have failed on the new generator for a total of 32. Include the 9 that failed on ESD or the AC line test, that's 41 meters. Of the ones that survived, we have the Bryman BM869S, the BM839, the BM319, and the BM235. The Fluke 101, the 107, the 115, and the 17B Plus all survived that testing as well. Along with the Goss and Metrowatt M248B, the Hyoki DT4252, and believe it or not, 
Radio Shack's catalog number 220087. I always considered that 87V to be a flyer. Personally for myself, that was a totally unexpected result. So now here we are two years later and I'm getting to run the latest version of the Fluke 87V, giving it one more chance to prove itself. I haven't heard from one person who thought that this meter was going to fare any better than the previous ones. But if it does, now what's that say about all the other meters that don't make the grade? I'm probably a minority at this point, but I'm going to be rooting for this 87V. But sadly, like most of you, I don't expect a whole lot out of it. But if it does perform well, we're really going to have to say Fluke stepped up their game. I've shown in various videos what it takes to make a meter survive some low energy transients like the ones I'm using to evaluate these meters. It's not rocket science and it certainly doesn't add a lot of cost to the meters. There really is not a reason in my opinion that a meter designed recently wouldn't be robust. I think that there's always going to be these lower class meters but of course if people continue to buy them they'll continue to manufacture them. You know, personally, I don't have any problem spending money on quality products. And when I say quality, I mean products that are going to last. And to do that, they have to be robust. Well, I think that's going to be it for this short little video. Just consider this my intro for the next round of testing. I hope to see you all in part 5 later.